Hey there, Jason Podolan back without my hockey. And I have a story to share, uh, a lesson on, on, uh, on identity and a lesson on being authentically you that I think is more relevant now than it has been in a long time. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I just got off a call with a junior player. Uh, his game's struggling right now. He's struggling right now and can't really figure out why. Low energy, feels tight, feels stiff, not playing his best game. Uh, lots, well, I shouldn't say lots. That some concern that maybe stuff was happening away from the rink. Uh, that was a distraction or was causing stress. Uh, as it turns out, it's none of those things at all. And the reason for his performance issues is because he's trying so damn hard. He's trying so damn hard to be so damn good that there's a heaviness about him, that there's a seriousness about him that doesn't align with who he is. Now, this is made with the best intentions. Players at the amateur level who are trying to get recognized and get scholarships and are getting, uh, want to get drafted and want to become professionals, there is more information out there now than ever on how to be a good hockey player away from the rank, rank and what high performance means. So generally, when I'm working with athletes, I am trying to get them to align their thoughts, actions, habits with their goals and dreams. And the more we can align those, the better off we are. But there are situations where players are almost too aligned and they're so aligned that it's actually not them. It, there's too much heaviness to it. And that's what this player did. At the end of last season, he made a conscious commitment to himself that he was going to do everything he could to be the best player that he could. Meant the ideal sleeping program, the ideal nutrition program, the ideal workout program, the ideal pre-game warm-up, the ideal pre-practice warm-up, the ideal uh, visualization uh, exercises. You get the point. When we are so bound and determined, oh my goodness, and I forgot one. Even how he was supposed to be in the locker room to be the leader that he thought he was supposed to be. That he needed to be more serious. That he needed to talk less. That he needed to be a better example. That's heavy. Right? That's, that's a job. You need to remember who you are as a person. And that's a difficult one. When I work with players, I talk about it as the personal operating manual. One of the words I use religiously is self-awareness. I teach players to be self-aware so they can be empowered players to optimize themselves. Optimization for one player is not the same as it is for another. I know that firsthand. When I went to the Detroit Vipers, I was taken off waivers by the Tampa Bay Lightning. I have had three or four really successful years in the minor leagues. I was 24 years old, I think. And for some reason, I couldn't get to the NHL and I couldn't figure out why. So I thought it must have been a personality thing. I thought it must have been that the coaches and the management didn't think I was serious enough because I was a guy that didn't come to practice three hours before and I was a guy that didn't stay three hours after practice and I wasn't doing push-ups in front of the coach and uh, I'd go out for some beers after the game. That was how I played my best. That was what worked for me. But in that year where I made that decision, I was like, I'm not going out anymore. I am having the ideal uh, protein shake every day, by the way, which was all dairy and I'm lactose intolerant and that totally wasn't helpful. Uh, I had the ideal pre-practice routine and I stretched and I visualized. I did this and I did that and I was trying to be serious in the locker room. And guess what? I had my absolute worst professional season that year when I was trying my best to be who I thought everyone thought I was supposed to be. So there is a line there where you need to figure out your own personal operating manual. And for some, it is taking a step back to take a step forward. You need to be you. You need to be you. As Scott Nichol famously said on my podcast, one of my best quotes of all time, he said, you cannot have 20 milk drinkers on a hockey team. Now, he didn't obviously mean that figuratively like actual milk drinkers, but you can't have the same personality type. You can't have everybody being and acting the exact same way. There's no ideal way to be a leader or to be a captain. It's how you are going to be a leader and a captain from your own personality type. So if you're one of those players who's playing heavy right now, who everything feels hard, 
uh, who feels tired and you're not sure why, maybe you are actually trying too hard. And you are trying too hard in a way that isn't you. So take a step back, self-assess, see what type of player you are. Does that align with your own personal operating manual? And have fun. Connect to the fun in the game again. When it stops being fun, you're dead. Right? So connect to those points of the game, those areas of the game that you enjoy from a youthful, childlike perspective. Align with who you are as a person. If you're funny, be funny. If you're relaxed, be relaxed. If you're serious, be serious. It's all good. You can work into a locker room just fine. Everyone has a place. Everyone is a piece to that puzzle. And then when you do that, you will bring your best game to the ice. And at least you're growing up in a generation that accepts that. That everyone is different. That everyone has their own way to prepare, their own way to get their best uh, effort. And, and yeah, and that's what we're looking for, right? To have fun with the game and to get the best results possible. So I empower you to build that personal operating manual in week four of my program, my four-week mindset program and personal development program for hockey players. I dedicate an entire lesson to be you. Be you and have fun. So be you and have fun. Continue to play hard and keep your head up. Until next time. I'm Jason Padone. Cheers.